Good morning guys, welcome to Physiology of Pain. It's 7.30 in the morning, so if you hear some birds or dogs getting lively, then just know that they're happy because it's morning. Okay. Uh, physiology of Pain is a topic from CNS where we'll discuss how pain works, how it starts, how it travels to your brain and how it ends, the pathways and all that. Mainly, we will also be looking at two more extra things, but not in this video because extra knowledge is just going to overwhelm you. I'll make separate videos. They're not huge topics, they're small topics, but just for the sake, we'll just make another two videos so that you have a little gap in between to mentally prepare yourself. Easy, they're all easy, don't worry. So first, here we'll be looking at pain. And then we'll be looking at um, the classification of pain, the components, the pain pathway, the neurotransmitter. So this will be the first video. In the second video, we'll discuss about analgesic system. Okay, so here we're discussing the pain system. Next, we'll be discussing analgesic system. Analgesic system is the system that has been prepared by your body to counteract pain. So you can't always be in your pain. Your body can change its configuration a little to provide momentarily relief from pain. Actually, your body can modify itself a little to provide momentary relief from a lot of things. Even in case of hypotension, it has a cope-up mechanism. Even in case of diabetes, it has a cope-up mechanism. Even in case of hypoglycemia, it has a cope-up mechanism. That's what physiology is all about. How your body reacts to specific kinds of stress. Okay, so yeah, in case of pain also, your body has an analgesic system. And third, we will be looking at the most important gait control theory. Okay, so in your exams, if they're asking a question about pain pathway, if they're asking a question about physiology of pain, then you can be pretty sure that 80% of the time it is going to be followed up by a question regarding gait control theory. Let it be your board exams or let it be your viva. Okay, gait control theory is very, very important when you're dealing with physiology of pain. It's just like that. Uh, there's no other way around it. Now, in this video, we'll start with physiology of pain. And I want to thank Om Hari uh, for requesting this video. And one more important news is the handwritten notes of this lecture will be available in the Facebook group. One more important news, we have a Facebook group. Uh, I just created the Facebook group yesterday. It's dedicated. It's like a WhatsApp group, but WhatsApp groups for neat PG preparation have a participant limits. So I thought we'll have a Facebook group. We now have a Facebook group. Okay. Uh, the link will be in the description below. And by the time I upload this video, there will be a video telling you how you can get to the Facebook group via the link and how you can even follow me on Instagram to message me personally, if that's more of your area. Okay, so the handwritten notes will be available in the Facebook group. There's a link in the description. Subscribe for more, like, comment and all those things. We'll directly get to it. We have a lot to cover. So, physiology of pain. Okay, what is pain? First, we'll look at the definition. What is pain? Pain is something unpleasant. So, you don't want it. It's an unpleasant stimulus which might be either physical or emotional. So we are not only talking about the physical pain, we can also talk about the mental pain. It causes the same biochemical reactions in the brain according to some authorities that physical pain does. Now, what is the use? The use is, it's protective. Okay, it's protective in nature. How is it protective? So any injury or any agent let's say agent any agent causes you pain it immediately leads to a reflex that would be a protective reflex so imagine you touch a hot pan you Im immediately as a reflex withdraw your hand that is one of the protective reflexes okay imagine somebody hurts you immediately move away again part of the protective reflex imagine somebody is going to hit you you immediately move back because the mental anticipation of the pain is also there. So it's a protective reflex. This is one way by which it works. Second way is imagine you're already in pain. Would you move around a lot? Okay. So there is restriction of movement, 
which will lead to faster recovery okay restriction of movement into faster recovery so we covered the definition of pain we also covered the uses of pain now we we'll look at the types of pain okay now if i had to speak about pain i could go on for hours and hours there's uh, books on management of pain palliative medicine they are bigger than harrison's believe it or not so if i have to talk about the medicinal aspects of pain there is a lot to cover when you come to second year or if you're already in second year then you might be knowing about socrates when we talk about any pain we have to talk about it in terms of socrates s stands for sight so where is the pain coming from o stands for onset did the pain develop gradually or was it sudden in onset c stands for character okay now if you are in physiology then character and sight are the most important things you'll face okay uh, i'll tell you why now r stands for radiation so actually we'll include that also r is also important r stands for radiation okay a stands for aggravating factors so on doing what does your pain increase e stands for elevating factors when does it decrease t stands for time okay when is the pain more is it pain more in the morning is it more in the night and s stands for severity how severe it severe how severe is it okay does it allow you to do any work are you unable to move because of the pain and all that now when you are coming in physiology three things you are supposed to know is sight character and radiation sight and radiation together they will help us know two things that is something regarding referred pain okay what's referred pain referred pain is a pretty simple topic and might as well cover it now referred pain means origin of the pain is somewhere else but you're feeling the pain somewhere else okay uh, it's commonly seen it's a common phenomena it's not an abnormal phenomena why does it happen it's because of some dermatomes it's because of all dermatomes examples i'll give you examples imagine a person has appendicitis or first draw a human body okay in my hand we have the abdomen and let's say this is the pubis good imagine this is also the umbilicus now if the person is having some amount of appendicitis which occurs at mcburney's point if you don't know what is the mcburney's point just imagine it's a little bit below the umbilicus to the right so a person is having appendicitis the pain is supposed to be at the mcburney's point but initially the pain will be near the umbilicus okay referred pain the origin is there but you are getting it around the umbilicus similarly it also goes for ovaries which are also found in the pelvis area they will also be having pain in the umbilicus in case of heart attack the pain is supposed to be in the mediastinum but you get pain all over the chest dermatome over the neck over the left shoulder in case of any gall dysfunction the pain is supposed to be in the right hypochondrium what is the right hypochondrium it is the right rib cage area if you don't know that okay so the pain is supposed to be here but where will you be get where will you be getting the pain you will be getting it on the right shoulder so these are referred pains the origin is different but you will be getting the pain in a different area that's referred pain why does it happen because the skin where you are getting the pain and the origin of the pain are both supplied by the same nerve okay the nerve supply the nerve which supplies the site of pain that is the origin and where you are feeling the pain are supplied by the same nerve so according to bell majendi law no matter where the stimulation you are going to get the pain there if you don't know bell majendi law go read it okay it's because ev- just know that it's because everything is connected okay the same nerve is supplying the skin and the same nerve is supplying the organ which is affected so 
our body is getting confused to thinking that the pain is coming from the different area that's what referred pain is and this is what we call dermatome law okay you can mention this in your exams for extra points we completed referred pain yeah we'll come back to our socrates okay sight and radiation are important now the character there are a lot of characters what type of pain are you feeling is it a sharp pain is it a dull pain is it a colicky type of pain colicky type is pain increases and decreases increases and decreases increases and decreases most commonly seen in visceral organs so if you are feeling a colicky type of pain it might have something to do most commonly with hollow organs of your body like the intestines or the gall bladder or the ureter okay in case of uh, renal calculi you will get a colicky type of pain in the lower abdomen in case of uh, gall bladder pain there will be a colicky type of pain in the right hypochondrium or the shoulder area and if there is some amount of intestinal abnormality there will be colicky type of pain in the abdomen okay that's what colicky type of pain is is it a burning type of pain burning type of pain also seen in burns or acidity okay acidity can also be called a type of burns so you get a burning type of pain then there is electric type of pain shooting type of pain which is seen in some neuralgia so nerve injury leads to shooting type of pain whenever the nerve is fired okay now how do we classify the pain we got character of the pain but that's not the classification we have a different classification of pain classification of pain can be visceral so something to do with the hollow organs skin and deeper structures so what are deeper structures if we exclude all the visceral organs so those are the internal organs then the deeper structures would include muscles and bones and all the other things which are not included in visceral's and we have referred pain i already completed referred pain i'm not going to do it once again go back and refer again if you want we have a shortage of time sorry yeah now components of pain we finally get into the meat of the matter till now it was just the introduction now the meat components okay pain again is of two types but let's say it has two components fast component and a slow component okay immediately on stimulus what you feel is a sharp type of pain imagine somebody pinches you initially there is that shock that's the sharp type of pain that is by if a delta fibers okay fast type of pain the slow type of pain is dull so after somebody pinching you the pain starts radiating it just becomes a little bit dull not specifically localized to that area that is by c type of fibers now one more thing which is interesting in this whole thing is the a delta fibers are myelinated okay the c fibers are not myelinated so maybe you can link it like that myelinated fibers are always faster in the transmission so the fast type of pain is linked to myelinated and the c type are unmyelinated so since the unmyelinated fibers are slow it's linked to slow type of pain this is how you can remember okay now uh, we also need to look at the neurotransmitters the a delta are related to glutamate that is their neurotransmitter and the c type are related to the neurotransmitter substance p glutamate and substance p are compulsory in a question asked regarding physiology of pain you have to mention this there's no other way you have to mention it. and you have to mention the gate control okay now pathway the meat of the matter most important pathway now most people fear this it's quite easy pretty easy pretty simple and after the pathway the video ends and we'll go on to analgesic system and gate control theory in a different video notes are on facebook don't worry now the pathway is pretty pretty simple first you need to know that pathway is controlled by a few neurons okay so we have the origin neurons which come from i'll just draw a schematic then i'll draw the actual diagram okay so imagine this is the point of contact 
so this is where the stimulus appeared from here a nerve so uh, you know the dorsal root ganglia and i'm assuming you know the dorsal root ganglia and that's the main sensory ganglia at every level of the vertebra it's a bipolar ganglia so one of the processes is the sensory part that's the dendritic part is at the point of contact now the receptors of pain are free nerve endings i forgot to mention it here free nerve endings are the receptors of pain just like we have thermoreceptors we have proprioceptors we have meissner capsules and merkel's discs for pressure sensations free nerve endings are the receptors for pain okay if pain has to be stimulated you need free nerve endings there okay so you have free nerve endings and these are the dendrites they go on to the bipolar dorsal root ganglia okay and from there the efferent sorry the afferent so from the bipolar it would be different they go and land up in the posterior gray horn okay posterior gray horn so the nerve which comes from the free nerve endings that's the point of contact to the posterior gray horn is the first order neuron okay first order neuron from the posterior gray horn till the thalamus okay right 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 from here to the thalamus now note not only thalamus we have four more we have the reticular activating system we have acted duct of sylvius we have tectum midbrain so there are totally four of them for now for ease of this thing we'll just consider thalamus okay actually let's make four of them so mainly the thalamus then we'll also have ras aqueduct of sylvius one more tectum midbrain yeah that's four actually so second order neurons from the posterior gray horn till one of these locations one of these locations okay now that would be the second order neurons so till here we have the second order neurons and from here till the final destination that is the cortex cerebral cerebral cortex okay because everything every stimulus from your body has to finally end up in your brain there is no other way so it finally has to go to the cortex that is carried by the third order neurons so the neurons from here okay all these four areas till the cortex are called third order neurons okay now where exactly in the cortex we'll discuss it when we look at the pathway proper and when will we do that we'll do it now okay so hope you guys understand this it's pretty simple from the point of contact from where it's stimulated to the posterior gray horn is the first order neuron that is the dorsal root ganglia from there to the thalamus acetabulum sylvius reticular activating system and tectum midbrain are the second order neurons and from there they relay okay second order neurons relay there and from there to the cortex are the third order neurons okay pretty simple till now if you draw this much it's fine but if you want to get more artistical you can go to the next one but this much is quite enough quite enough now we'll get to the artistical part point of contact okay dorsal root ganglia and from dorsal root ganglia let me draw the spinal cord okay spinal cord has this gray matter and white matter so we came and landed in the posterior gray 
horn right here okay now the thing is we just don't have one pain pathway we have two pain pathways with each of them ending up in a different location this is for the fast fibers I'm going to first go on with the fast fibers then I'll go with the slow fibers both of them are 90% same except for a few things and 90% same okay so first order posterior gray horn where in the posterior gray horn marginal nucleus this marginal nucleus will change when we look at the slow fibers okay so these are the fast fibers a delta from there they will go through the anterior commissure which is here okay anterior commissure and they will enter the lateral lemniscus and ascend upwards so first order neurons lay in the marginal nucleus to the second order neurons which cross the anterior commissure go up using the lateral lemniscus and where do they relay they relay in the thalamus few of it go and relay in the ras reticular activating system okay so these were the second order neurons lateral lemniscus what it is the spino thalamic tract because it's in the spinal cord and it's going to the thalamus spino thalamic tract okay and after reaching the thalamus the third order neurons will go to the cortex cortex where in the cortex quite simple it's the post central gyrus what is the post central gyrus imagine this is the brain imagine this is the brain there will be a huge depression or a sulcus as we call it if you are not yet completed your neuroanatomy there will be a huge depression in the brain in the center in the parietal part this is called the central sulcus and there will be one line anterior to it and one line posterior to it now the amount of brain here in between the central gyrus and the line behind it is what we call the post central gyrus okay post central gyrus this is the anterior central gyrus okay and we could name all of them like uh, this one would be the superior frontal middle frontal and uh, inferior frontal gyrus but we'll not get into it right now that's anatomy okay you got this right so you have a delta fibers which are the fast fibers which are actually from bipolar neurons of dorsal root ganglia they go and lay in the posterior gray horn cells to the marginal nucleus from where the second order neurons start which pass through the anterior commissure go up through the lateral lemniscus that's the spinal thalamic tract and relay in the thalamus from the thalamus to the cortex via third order neurons quite simple when you look at the fast fibers slow fibers now we look at the slow fibers it's almost the same we have a spinal cord again we have the gray matter okay you get that pain dorsal root ganglia c fibers okay they went to the gray horn and they relayed in the posterior gray horn yes but where in the posterior gray horn now it changes this is called substantia gelatinosa of renaldo gelatinosa of ronaldo from here again they start anterior commissure lateral spinothalamic tract to the thalamus of course but only 1 by 5th of the fibers are traveling to the thalamus 4 by 5th of them will be traveling to the other three locations that is ras reticular activating system aqueduct of sylvius not actually the aqueduct of sylvius but the gray matter around the aqueduct of sylvius now what is the aqueduct of sylvius it's a canal through which the csf flows i am not willing to say more than that okay and then tectum midbrain okay these are the second order neurons and the third order neurons from them to the post central 
kairos of cortex okay first order neurons from the point of stimulus to the posterior gray horn cells where in the posterior gray horn cells substantia gelatinosa of ronaldo then from there the cells one fifth of them the fibers will go to the thalamus these are the second order neurons four by fifth of them are distributed among reticular activating system aqueduct of sylvius and tectum midbrain and third order neurons relay from there to the cortex where they are processed we finished it just one more simpler thing is involved like what what areas are supplied by what what nerve i'll take up take it up in the next video because we are already running short of time okay thank you for watching the notes are on facebook you can follow me on instagram subscribe for more like comment share and all those things i'll see you in my next video where we'll discuss analgesia and gate control bye